Hey hands, it's me, Sarah, and today I thought, let's talk about the one-child policy. So some of you guys may be wondering, why am I even talking about this policy? Is it still relevant? After all, it's no longer in effect. And I would say, yes, it is still relevant, and it should not be something so easily forgotten with time, because A, it is a policy that has affected millions of narratives, and B, it still affects society as a whole today. It has greatly affected China's demographic, and I do feel it's a policy that we can learn from, but we also may see it in history again. So that's why I do think the one-child policy is still so relevant, but also I understand as an artist I reference it so much. So what is the one-child policy? Well, the one-child policy is part of China's birth planning program, and it was introduced in 1979, but it wasn't officially written into the constitution until 1982, and it was created in order to prevent overpopulation and famine in China, and as you can guess, it limits the number of children that you can have. The Chinese government and birth planning officials highly propagandized this policy. You can see it in television, you can see it on posters, you can see it written on walls like slogans, and honestly, pretty much anywhere you looked, you could see this policy being heavily propagandized. The government and birth planning officials enforced this policy in a variety of ways. The most common was through fines, which were often 5 to 10 times more than a parent's disposable income. And if they couldn't pay those fines, sometimes things were taken from the home. For example, livestock or TVs. But then I think the absolute worst way that this policy was sometimes enforced is Sometimes women were given forced abortions and sterilizations. How strictly the policy was enforced definitely varied depending on your location, racial demographic, and just the overall time period in which you had your child, because some years may have been more strict compared to other years. The policy was usually stricter towards the Han majority compared to racial minorities, and in urban areas it tended to be stricter compared to rural areas where there was actually a slight variation on the policy many times, which is the one son, two child policy. So if your first child was a daughter, then you could potentially try again after a few year interval for a son. So with the enforcement of this policy, many children have been abandoned, especially baby girls, and China has had a long history of son male preferences, but it is complicated. For example, in rural areas, many people don't have good social security systems for retirement, so children are seen as people to take care of them in their old age, and while sons are seen as permanent members of the family, they carry on the family names, while daughters are often seen as people who marry away. They, once they get married, they are obligated to take care of their husband's families. So there is that complexity with this policy, especially let's say in rural areas, you have a one son, two child policy. Your first child is a daughter. So then you have a second child and it's a daughter that that's complicated because a lot of those people do want sons. So second, third, fourth daughters are usually the ones that are abandoned and as an adoptee, I can say I feel there's a strong possibility that I'm a second or third daughter just from the research I have done. But it is a very complex situation to be in. Although I do want to put it out there that many parents do want both a son and a daughter, and I definitely feel if this policy wasn't around, people would keep more daughters. And one reading actually states how in China, people who adopted wanted to adopt different sexes for different reasons. When a boy was adopted, functional and economic reasons were given, raising a son for care and old age, and continuing the family line. With girls, less tangible emotional reasons were more common, such as increase of joy in life, although care and old age was also mentioned. Many childless couples mentioned that girls had special characteristics to be appreciated. They were more familiar, closer to their parents, and more obedient than boys. So it's not like Chinese families don't want daughters. In fact, many times first-born daughters aren't abandoned. It's usually second or third or fourth-born daughters who were born in the pursuit of a son. So with the one-child policy and the generalized preference for son, China has one of the highest skewed sex ratios. There are around 114 boys for every 100 girls, meaning there are around 30 million more men than women in China. But with the policy, there has also been a rise of hey, hazes. Please forgive my pronunciation, I probably butchered that. 
but hey has is also translated to black children in English and it refers to a demographic of children who are born outside of the one child policy. So many times these children are discriminated against by the government and birth planning practices so they don't have full legal status and many times they aren't even registered in the national household registration. So yeah it's a complicated situation where they pretty much don't really exist and parents try to hide these children from the government so A, they don't have to face consequences or fines or whatever may come with the overquoted child or have the child taken away. It is often very hard for parents who have hey hai zi to get them registered because they are considered overquoted illegal children usually. The one child policy ended in 2015 and was replaced by the two child policy. The one child policy lasted around 35 years. With this knowledge, I understand that the position my birth parents were in was probably very complicated and complex. Although the one-child policy was rather short-lived, it has drastically affected China's society and demographic, from the skewed sex ratio to the very large aging demographic compared to working demographic, to the undocumented children, and to all the children who were abandoned or adopted, it has affected society on a groundbreaking, shaking level and I do feel it's important to understand that this will have ripple effects for years to come. And whether it's good or bad is up to you to decide. Of course, I do understand in sharing this video, I have my own biasms. And you can probably tell that personally, I'm not for the one child policy. I think it's cruel and has caused a lot of issues within the social structure. Granted, I can have empathy for people who do agree with it and understand why they may think it's a good thing. But personally, I don't agree with it. Thank you all so much for watching. I do want to say I understand my knowledge is still so small in comparison to all that this policy entails, although I do try to do a lot of research, but also I am looking at it from a very westernized lens. Although I am a Chinese American adoptee, English is the only language I know fully, and I was raised here in America. So yes, that does affect my research. I can't read articles that are in Chinese unless they're translated to English. So take this information with a grain of salt. Also, again, thank you guys so much for watching. Please click the like button if you enjoyed the video. Click that notification bell so you know when I'm posting and subscribe so you can join me on more of all this. This, uh, I'm, uh. yeah, I think that's everything. Bye, honeys.